Why do we suffer? This Lent, we're exploring the path to follow Christ one day at a time. And so it's natural that we ask ourselves, why are we suffering at times? And how do we deal with that? What is the meaning of my suffering? Why do I go through this? Why me? Why others? And not too long ago, I had the opportunity to talk to a young man, a young boy, about seven years old, who was dying. And you would think this young kid would have a pity party. And honestly, before someone like that, you have nothing to say sometimes except be there with them. And instead of pitying himself, this young boy exclaimed how blessed he was, how happy he was. And I had to ask him why. And this young man explained, because I am suffering with Jesus. I'm with him. My suffering is helping other people. And plumbing the depths of that profound phrase of this young boy, I couldn't help but reflect on the meaning of Lent, on the meaning that each one of us is looking for in this Lent. Because what greater question is there, my brothers and sisters, than what is the meaning of my sufferings? My headache, my cancer, losing that job, not getting that promotion, being dumped by that guy or that girl, that betrayal, being in prison, being persecuted for my faith, feeling like God is not hearing my prayers, sometimes just not feeling like praying for that matter. What is the meaning and how do I face the suffering that comes my way? And how do I do that on my Lenten journey? We hear in the second Sunday of Lent about the transfiguration. And we see Jesus, the man, in prayer and the disciples sleeping. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears in great glory and the disciples wake up and they see him. And then the Father speaks from the clouds saying, listen to my beloved son, listen to him. And then Jesus comes to them, touches them, raises them up and says, do not be afraid. And I think my brothers and sisters here in this gospel, we have the secret to unlock that deep question that we all have. How do we face suffering? What is the meaning of my suffering? And Jesus tells us that my path, my salvation that I'm going to give you is going to be through the path of suffering, through the path of the cross. And not just am I going to suffer for you and to redeem you, but I am going to let you share in that sacrifice. I am going to let you share in my cross so that you too can share in my resurrection. And so this Lent, the invitation that we have is a very profound one, a very challenging one for that matter. And that is not to reject, not to run from the sufferings that come your way, whatever they might be, be they physical, <clears throat> be they mental, <clears throat> be they spiritual, not to run from your, from your suffering. Jesus says, take up your cross, come, follow me. And that is the invitation. <clears throat> and that is the challenge. And that is the glorious path of Lent, is to follow after Christ, taking up our cross and finding meaning. You might think, or we might ask, Father, well, how do I do that? <clears throat> it's not easy. And I agree, <laughs> it's not easy. Jesus doesn't promise that it will be easy, but he does promise that it's possible. And that begins, above all, in our hearts saying, God, I know this isn't easy, but like Jesus, I want to accept your will. I want to accept, be it the sufferings that come from my own sins, be it the suffering that comes from my own broken personality and wounds and weaknesses and slaveries that I've developed in my life, be it the sufferings that come from the natural course of life, of old age, of loneliness, of lost work, of difficulties in prayer that we all have from time to time. Lord, I accept. Lord, thy will be done. And to offer, if you want to sweeten that even more, give it even more value, if you will, by the cross of Christ, just as Jesus, when he was on the cross, suffered and died for you, thought of you, said your name, saw the poor, the sick, the abandoned, prayed for them by name, offered himself by name for them. My brothers and sisters, as baptized Christians, we can offer our sufferings with Christ, and they have infinite value 
infinite value. Think of that. That you can help redeem others in Christ to offer your cancer, to offer your dryness in prayer, to offer your headache for that matter, or offer your study for a test that's not easy. You can offer all that with Christ, for Christ, in Christ, to the Father, for specific people, specific intentions. Let's not forget the souls in purgatory who depend on our prayers and our sufferings. So as we journey, continue our journey in Lent, my brothers and sisters, let's not miss the secret, the secret meaning, the value of the cross. Because it's that cross, it's that secret of suffering, redemptive suffering, that gives meaning, that gives value, that gives purpose to our lives, especially as Christians. And that is a secret that we can shine forth for the world. Think of the millions of people who suffer without hope and without meaning. And you, you can give that ray of hope. You and your words and your suffering offered with joy to God can be that sunrise that bursts forth in the dark horizons of the hearts of men and women throughout the world who don't know the value of suffering. So let's pray together, let's pray for each other that this Lent will not pass by without us learning the value and the dignity and the beauty of redemptive suffering. So our suffering, yes small, yes hidden so many times, but sweetened and united to the cross of Jesus, offered to his heart for others, will have infinite value, will transform their lives and our lives, and will give us not only the peace we're looking for, but also that freedom and joy that nothing, absolutely nothing in this life can keep us from the love of Christ. God bless you.